Hello, everyone. Welcome to Data Cloud Summit. Welcome to the session on solving for the future with Cloud Spanner. In today's session, we're going to focus on how Walmart goes about building its next generation data platform using Cloud Spanner. My name is Pranav Nambiar. I'm a director of product management on Google Cloud. I also have with me Bob Lowell, who is a senior director of engineering at Walmart. Together, we are today going to talk more about Cloud Spanner and how you can go about your digital transformation journey with using this service. In today's world, we put a very high bar on customer experience. And what we're seeing is that digital innovators are disrupting traditional industries by finding unique ways to manage their data to deliver highly personalized and enriching digital experiences. Whether it's a ride-sharing application or a gaming uh, experience or a retail experience or a payments platform, across the board, there's a very high bar on delivering differentiated customer experience. But to deliver a differentiated experience, you need sophisticated applications. You need applications that can scale to millions of users. That way, you don't end up with a crashed application when you have a lot of customers. You need applications that don't go down. You need applications that are very flexible, that are very performant and secure. You need to be able to leverage your application to deliver an enriching digital experience. When you look at all this from a high level, you will see that the most controlling factor here is your data management layer, where you have your business critical data. This is the data that is critical to innovating on your customer experience. To put another way, to build innovative customer experiences, you need transformative databases to hold your operational data. You need a database that delivers you industry-leading availability without any concept of a maintenance downtime. You need a database that can scale to whatever needs you want without you having to manually shard your data and manage your database. You need a database that can manage faults automatically, that can be price performant and secure. All in all, I'm sure you would have faced similar problems with your databases. Google too went through the same problems with its applications. And after a lot of research and effort, the end result was Cloud Spanner. Cloud Spanner is our horizontally scalable relational database that provides you asset transactions and SQL capabilities at pretty much any scale with five nines of availability SLA. Today, Spanner is used by a number of large customers. Spanner also powers most of Google's large applications. In fact, Spanner today powers more than 2 billion requests per second at peak. If you think about it, this is to operate at this level of scale, you need a system that is really pressure tested in a very intense and highly demanding environment. And it's very difficult to find similar systems out there. On that note, let me invite Bob, who's going to share with you Walmart's perspective on Cloud Spanner and provide you more details into how they went about their digital transformation journey. Over to you, Bob. Hey, thanks, Pranav. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity to, to share our journey. Um, I've been um, doing database administration and engineering for a long time, uh, as you can see on this slide. I've been lucky enough to, to spend a good chunk of my career at Walmart, where the scale and complexity of the problem statement is fairly unrivaled. Um, I came to Walmart to really um, help them with their journey to cloud, specifically around data. And the problem statement is basically, how can we build a platform that enables our application developers to focus on the business problems and deliver them um, a platform where they can access, store, secure, and enter their data into a complete data ecosystem without having to architect that all themselves. So Walmart is obviously a big operation. It's also a global operation. We've got 11,000 stores across the world in 20 different countries. Some more interesting facts about Walmart scale and, and, the, and the impact that Walmart can have. 
Um, that's one of the most exciting things to me about working at Walmart is, is the impact that we can have. Um, uh, Suresh Kumar, our CTO, said the other day, you know, at Walmart, you can write a single line of code that it can prove that can improve the lives of millions of people. That's it's true and it's very powerful. Um, you know, the the ability for us to help deliver these experiences is um, it's it's very motivating. Uh, the other thing that stands out to me on this slide is 2.2 million employees uh, worldwide. You think about that, and, and even the HR systems at Walmart scale well beyond what most companies have to deal with. So digital transformation at the scale of Walmart is a pretty consistent thing, right? Um, we can't take 40,000 or so different database systems and, and just upgrade them or change them overnight, right? You have to attach to building great customer experiences. You have to attach to what the company is trying to do to find the right opportunities. Um, we spend a lot of time working on omni-channel experiences, the merging of online and in-store experiences. So um, the, the line is blurred between the two. We modernize the platform by aligning with those experiences that Walmart wants to create in order to transform the business. And that's how we, we get the, we call them locomotives to, to pull our technologies uh, forward with the locomotives of transformative experiences. So this is just a, a quick picture of, of kind of how we have our system of record data. Um, we basically have, um, you can see a, a, a good chunk of relational databases, you know, relational databases have been the powerhouse for, for many, many years, mainframe databases, as well as some NoSQL databases. So what's the problem with that? Um, Walmart has to have elastic scale, as you could probably guess, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we scale sometimes 10 to 100x what we'd be doing in a normal day. Uh, we have to have great uh, HADR, BC, um, because one minute of downtime is huge revenue loss for Walmart, and we really can't afford it. We can't afford an active passive system that's going to take me three, four minutes to fail over. Sharding um, is something we've, we've done in the past. We have a lot of sharded systems, but it adds a lot of complexity, right? There's a limit to the vertical scaling that you can do with a relational database, and it forces you into uh, partitioning in ways that might not be natural for the application. We need to be able to get data downstream uh, to all of our customers. You know, relational databases uh, have some decent tools for that, but but not everything not everything does. Um, we need to be able to capture metadata and push that downstream as well. Um, and, uh, jumping to the, the bottom one there, NoSQL solves a lot of these problems, but the lack of transactionality is really difficult when you're talking about payment systems or, or capturing transactions that really need to be captured um, in an ACID compliant way. So as we're looking at our transformation, we, had, uh, we have a, a set of principles that we look at um, in order to you know, guide us on that journey of, of taking a technology and, and transforming or taking an application really and transforming the way that we're going to build a platform for it. Um, first of all, we want to be cloud native. We need to take advantage of all um, the, <clears throat> the availability and, and the geo distribution um, that cloud native can offer, the elasticity that cloud native can offer. Um, and the first thing you really need to do is understand um, your access patterns for different applications, understand what, what the business is trying to accomplish. Those things go hand in hand. Uh, you, you need to really deeply understand what the business is trying to do in order to apply the right technology to it. So you need to look at representative workloads. You need to benchmark. Um, we need to figure out the best way to standardize data access. Well, without a standardization, you get a lot of snowflakes and it becomes very hard to maintain an enterprise environment. We always, like I mentioned before, want to have change data capture. And of course, time to market is always a pressure, right? Walmart is moving very quickly to transform the way people shop. Um, and they need a platform to do that on. So we need to move quickly to make that happen. We use um, what we call best of breed to define products that fit our needs. 
And a big part of that is what we call the illities, whether it's observability, availability, scalability, operability, security, all of these things need to be addressed in order for us to be successful, to successfully offer a, a, a platform and have to be baked into any product that's gonna end up on our best of breed list. So the good news is Spanner, obviously why I'm here, Spanner fit into that best of breed category. Um, looking at the, the cl cloud native capabilities, the multi-region capabilities were very important to us. Um, the uptime, of course, um, all of the, the factors are, were things that we deeply evaluated, partnered with Google on to make sure that they met the, the illities part of the requirement, as well as the capabilities part of the requirement, the features that our customers needed uh in order for us to transform the way that they're they're operating um their portion of the business so my key insights on on transformative uh digital uh transformations or digital transformations is really um build a partnership with google right have them understand as well as you understand what it is you're trying to achieve uh, I really look at, at us as kind of the glue between the technology and the business problem being solved. And we're the, we're the ones who have to make sure um, that that match is a, is a good fit and it's going to solve those business problems as well as uh, improve the way that we're, we're running the infrastructure under the covers. Um, like I mentioned several times, you want to align with the business. That's how you're going to create value. And that's how you, you transform. If you align with the business, the changes that you make are going to be transformative and not just upgrades. Um, you need to standardize your capabilities list when you're running a platform and make it easy for the app team to focus on the business differentiation rather than focus on trying to architect uh, a data platform. Um, and finally, you know, hire and retain people who are passionate about the vision. Um, we're always looking for those types of engineers. Thanks a lot, Bob. Those are really some great insights, which I'm sure will be very valuable for many companies who are looking forward to similar digital transformation journeys. I'm really excited about our partnership with Walmart and definitely looking forward to continuing this partnership as we go forward. I'm also very excited about Spanner's potential across the board, across multiple segments. Today, we have a number of large customers use Spanner, mainly because Spanner offers you all the good aspects of the relational database, while at the same time giving you the scale and availability equivalent of a non-relational database. Today, we have large retailers, gaming companies, technology companies, and banking companies use Spanner. And we are really focused on continuing to innovate on Spanner so that we can take this experience to the next level. On that note, I wanted to share with you some of the key highlights from our launches on Cloud Spanner. To start with, we launched support for PostgreSQL interface on Cloud Spanner. This is available in Tribute today. And as you all know, PostgreSQL interface is easily becoming the de facto standard for relational databases. With this launch, we want to democratize access to Spanner's capability with the familiar PostgreSQL interface for our customers. Continuing on the theme of democratization, I'm also happy to share with you that we added support for granular instances on Spanner. This is again available in preview today and will be in GA shortly. If you look at a typical Spanner instance as thousand crossing units of compute capability, granular instances gives you the ability to provision one tenth of that in other words, 100 processing units. This makes it more cost-effective to run smaller workloads on Spanner. Continuing on the theme of cost-effectiveness, I'm also excited to share with you that we recently launched support for committed use discounts. With this, you can actually commit to a specific level of usage for one year or three years, and in return, get 20% or 40% discount respectively. These discounts apply to all your projects and all the regions where you are in. That way you're not logged into a specific set of resources. I'm also excited to share with you that Spanner Chain Streams is coming soon. 
With chain streams, you can easily access and integrate Spanner with other downstream systems. With chain streams, pretty much in near real time, you can access all the changes in Spanner and update your downstream analytics engines. Or you could easily set up triggers to set up business logic based on specific data patterns. You could even use chain streams to archive your changes on your Spanner database in near real time. All in all, with chain streams, we want to make the data in Spanner more accessible and make it easily integratable with the rest of your broader data ecosystem. With that said, I want to call out that I've only highlighted a few of Spanner's key launches. We are continuously focusing on a very rapid innovation momentum. To give you a sense of it, just in 2021 alone, we had 58 launches on Spanner. We're going to continue on this momentum and looking forward to building more such launches in the coming years. In the end, if what we've shared today resonates with you, I definitely suggest that you check out our online material. If you're new to Spanner, you should definitely check out our Spanner Database Unlimited video series on YouTube. And of course, there are a bunch of sessions in Data Cloud Summit on Spanner. We also have a session focused on database ecosystem and strategy. Do check it out. Finally, I would like to thank you all for joining this session. Thank you, Bob, for sharing all your valuable insights on digital transformation. I wish you all the very best in your transformation journey going forward. Thank you.